um you know quickly to tell you about my journey i am a chartered accountant by profession and then i did my mba from duke university usa worked there for about 6 years um primarily in healthcare across the spectrum in finance and marketing and then moved back to join my father's business uh, when i joined the business 95% of the sales came from india today only about 50% of the sales comes from india we've become a truly global country a company with presence in over 70 countries um i specifically look after the india business uh, at mqo so manage about 6000 medical representatives uh, 17 therapeutic areas ranging all the way from women's health uh, to hypertension cardio diabetes uh, oncology nephrology uh, you know neuro diseases across the board uh, derma we're pretty much there everywhere um and i think one of the areas that i'm personally very passionate about and hope i can do a lot uh, over the next few years not just in awareness and diagnosis but even in policy shaping is women's health and uh, you'll all be shocked to know that um you know when world economic forum came up with their report out of 156 countries surveyed india ranked one bottom two on women's health and that pushed me to start a youtube channel called uncondition yourself with namita where i do like these 15 to 17 minute short videos on different health topics uh, with doctors and women patients on their journeys and these are stories of courage stories of pain but stories of strength and then shark tank has been a brilliant opportunity because like sairi rightly said entrepreneurship is something i'm passionate about i've been running an edtech company for the last 6 years that teaches student entrepreneurs um, and i really believe that this is the path that will create job creators um and really take our nation to the next levels i think it's it's time for women to speak up it's time for women to talk about uncomfortable topics and biases um it's time for us to really uh, make our voices heard and in a room full of women entrepreneurs uh, working towards growing their online businesses so namita what advice would you give to a budding entrepreneur who's just starting her journey actually there's a a lot of advice but i think for starters three things um first and foremost get customer insights so till you don't launch your business till you don't go out there and get those hard knocks and really get those customer insights you won't be able to really really fine tune your product your service your business to meet the consumer needs so i think getting the right customer insights is very important secondly know your numbers i see a lot of entrepreneurs who don't do enough market survey competitor data margin uh, analysis marketing spend you know things like customer acquisition costs you really have to be on top of these fundamentals uh, so get educated about these basics and know your numbers and thirdly entrepreneurship is um, a very tough journey i've seen my father first gen entrepreneur build his business and what he went through um, it's you're going to have more failures and more setbacks than successes uh, so you got to become thick skinned you have to have to uh, you know wake up every morning with that um, spring in your step that smile on, on your face that high energy uh, be positive keep keep facing every setback learn from every failure and i think if you do these three things um, that's the most important thing and of course the fundamental always is try to solve a real problem if you're not out there to solve a real problem that has a large target audience then what are you doing right Uh, so I think these are the three or four fundamental uh, advice that I give everybody, whether it's a guy or a woman. For a woman specifically, I'd like to say that please get rid of that guilt. Women are great at time management, but terrible at guilt management. Uh, so Tulika is asking, Hey Namita, I'm a big fan. As a shark on Shark Tank India, do you think there's a shift in terms of the emergence of women entrepreneurs in India, or do you think there's still a long way to go? So you know, globally, there was an HBR report that said only 2.3 percent of female-led companies. got funded in 2020 i mean that's a shocking number right 2.3% but i'm proud to say is at shark tank um 67 ventures got funded and 15% of these ventures that got funded had solo there were solo female led ventures so that 15% was a great number to see and 48% of the ventures that got funded had a female co-founder um so i think um it's always better to be an optimist than a whiner right um so definitely we have a long way to go but um, the numbers are looking up and we all have to do our part to keep making those numbers look better absolutely um we have a question from username yugo crafty uh, what do you suggest uh, to a person who's working to scale up their business so when you're thinking about scale you definitely 
need to think about um, expansion so for example you know there's always a hybrid strategy are you going to market only online or are you going to look at retail as well you know when you think about marketing you have to think about your online offline strategy where your money is better spent when you're thinking about finance right at what point do you go in for funding because for scale you need access to capital so at what point are you ready uh, to really get that funding whether it's angel and then eventually series a and series b so i think these are the kind of things you have to think about because without the right funding which is a finance strategy and without the right marketing um it will be very difficult for you to scale so get the right mentors um you know there are a lot of startups who have scaled get people uh, to to talk to you uh, hear their stories see how they've done it and then there's so much you can learn from them uh, about especially for women entrepreneurs and professionals like did you have a mentor and how did that help you and how did you go about choosing one there are two mentors who i really look up to and they have been my sounding board um and you know you need people who will not sugarcoat it for you at times who will be very brutally honest uh, to your face and as leaders who are running very large companies sometimes we don't have people telling us things to our face um so you need uh, people who will show you the mirror and uh, be both a guide and a critique how do you balance personal and professional life it is difficult right it it cannot work in a situation okay two hours to work and two hours to personal life it's not always black and white so what is an advice towards balancing a lot of stuff i know we as women are good at multitasking but it does takes a toll how do you manage um i think it's important to ask for help i think we tend to be perfectionist and say we'll do everything ourselves and then we overburden ourselves and a lot of times our family friends work colleagues are willing to help us Uh, so i'm pretty shameless i ask for a lot of help that helps me do multiple things and manage my time better secondly it's important to be selfish you know when you take care of yourself and take time out for workout or the salon it just makes you a happier person and when you are happier you're more productive thirdly get rid of that guilt it will unleash this crazy amount of energy in you when women do that um so you know i think a bunch of these things if we really change our mindsets i think a lot of times women are self limiting um in the way they think and if we get rid of these mental mind blocks we will ourselves unleash a lot more energy that will help us do a lot more things than we thought we were capable of namita you just spoke about it is very important to have mentors i have been trying to get you know uh, access to a mentor but unfortunately that's something very very difficult to find would you be able to guide where and how can we come across uh, you know mentors i'm into fashion jewelry business and yes i'm struggling big time to understand the nitty gritties of business and that's where i'm failing you see so that is what i was looking at thank you so much uh, manita i agree with you that it's not easy uh, you know abroad they have a lot of these support groups like for example sheryl sandberg has started lean in support groups there are a lot of these support groups of women where it's easy to find mentors in india uh, we don't have enough uh, you know working women the workforce participation has gone from 27% to 16% during the pandemic so we don't have enough working women to lean on to use as mentors to use as role models uh, but you should feel free to even approach male mentors and go to people and you know we we have a tough time asking because we feel like people will say no but my philosophy is if i ask 20 and even if one says yes why not So keep asking, be shameless. Keep asking, 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 and eventually you will find one person who will give you that time. Uh, but be cognizant that people are very, uh, you know, have very limited time these days, and so you always have to go with your homework. Keep the meetings very concise, very specific, so that you're respectful of the mentor's time. How do you scale up the service-oriented sector compared to, you know, a product? Or uh, you can always do it easily. Not much easy, but though comparatively, it's easy. But how to yes. scale up a service-oriented? So Anita startup. one of the common questions that we asked all startups that came on Shark Tank is what is your differentiator right and how cluttered is the market so something like yoga and meditation there are two realities one is it's a very cluttered market there are lots and lots of players so how will you make your brand stand out and unless you have a differentiator you're not going to scale but at the same time you know that's where I had a little bit of a disagreement with one of my co-sharks who said oh you stop your business go to a job and I said you know what it's okay to run a small business and realize you're not going to scale or it's okay to run a mid-sized business and realize you're not going to scale you're still your own boss and may not want to do a salary job you know so i think it's important to be realistic and really figure out that if i don't have a usp uh, then i'm not really going to be able to scale um and if i'm not going to be able to scale am i okay between having just a small or a mid-sized business um and that's okay too you know because you're still an entrepreneur you're still a master of your own destiny and you're still doing your own thing and learning every day जैसे अक्सर कोई ग्रेजुएट कर चुका हो और 
किसी के पास एक अच्छा आइडिया हो जिस तो आ, क्या उसके लिए सही रहेगा आपके हिसाब से कि वो सीधे बिजनेस चालू कर सकता है या फिर आ, किसी के अंडर काम करना या एक्सपीरियंस से वो कोई बिजनेस चालू कर आपके हिसाब से क्या सही रहेगा यू नो ये सवा ये जो है ये इंडिविजुअल पे डिपेंड करता है राइट थोड़े इंडिविजुअल्स ऐसे हैं जिन्हें स्टार्टिंग में या शुरुआत में थोड़े सी एक्सपीरियंस की जरूरत होती है उनमें वो आत्मविश्वास या वो कॉन्फिडेंस लाने के लिए राइट तो कोई दिक्कत नहीं है अगर आप थोड़े साल किसी के अंडर काम करो उसी फील्ड में जहां आपको कुछ स्टार्टअप करना है तो आपका पैशन पहले आइडेंटिफाई करो मतलब किस चीज में आपको सबसे ज्यादा पैशन है जुनून है दिलचस्पी है एक बार आपने वो इंडस्ट्री को आइडेंटिफाई की तो उसमें थोड़ा सा वर्क एक्सपीरियंस लेके अपने आइडिया को फाइन ट्यून करने में कोई दिक्कत नहीं है लेकिन बहुत बार ऐसे भी लोग होते हैं जिनको लगता है कि मैं अभी से ही रेडी हूँ मुझे किसी के नीचे काम नहीं करना है मैं अभी लॉन्च कर रही हूँ और मैं इसे सक्सेस बना दूंगी तो वो करने में भी कोई हार्म नहीं है तो ऐसे कोई एक स्टैंडर्ड आंसर नहीं होता है ऑन्टरप्रिनोरशिप के लिए आपको खुद के अंदर झांकना होगा आपको खुद की पर्सनालिटी को यू नो जज करना होगा कि आप किस किस्म से हो और किस चीज में आपको ज्यादा फायदा होगा तो या तो आप एक्सपीरियंस उस इंडस्ट्री में लेके फिर लॉन्च कीजिए या अभी से अगर आपको है कि आप तोड़ डालेंगे फोड़ डालेंगे तो इमेजिएटली लॉन्च कर दीजिए और लॉन्च करते करते सीखिए दोनों तरीके के ऑन्टरप्रिनोर्स मैंने देखे हैं एंड देर इज नो राइट एंड रॉन्ग आंसर for us end with one statement i know we spoke a lot about learning under somebody mentorship and learning finance and marketing and all of that but you know with as i've aged uh, with, with age or with you know as you get older one of the biggest lessons my mentor has taught me and which has really helped me to like you said become a better version of myself is please 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 listen to your inner voice uh, take that quiet time to be in touch with your inner voice and your instincts uh so make sure you're in touch with your inner voice and i always i've said this quote multiple times on shark tank too my favorite quote is be you the world will adjust you know just have pride in who you are and just be happy with who you are that will make you a more productive person and i'd like to end again by saying that um it's very important that women support other women rather than pulling them down um and i have so much respect and love for sairi um you know i can never say no to you sairi for anything and i really adore you and really have tremendous respect for all that you do so thank you for being you thank you so much namita i think uh, the respect's mutual uh, and of course i think keep rocking keep inspiring us and we will find the time to talk to you again maybe offline in pune maybe when you <laughs> sushi ro summit next uh, but for sure we will all be rooting for you and we will uh, take your advice seriously we'll act on it and of course we will keep you posted on the on all the progress everyone's making here and i think everyone's making progress in their own way